happy Monday. Welcome back to Zoo School. We are going into our eighth and final week here at Zoo School. We've enjoyed teaching you all about our animals here at the Cape May County Park and Zoo while you are safe at home. Um, if you are able to, please go over to our website and drop us a donation. Uh, we know that times are tough for everyone right now, but we really need your help. So if you've enjoyed our zoo school and you're able to help us out, please give us a donation in any way that you can. Thanks so much and enjoy these last few episodes. Hi, so I'm Zookeeper Megan and I'm welcoming you guys back to Primate Point. If you've watched this video series from the beginning, you may remember the first episode was here with um, our senior primate keeper, uh, Kim, here at Primate Point. And Kim introduced you guys to our apes, the uh, Siamangs. However, the Siamangs are not the only primates that live here at Primate Point, if you remember. So I'm going to introduce you to uh, some of our other guys who live up here in Primate Point. So we are going to meet our howler monkeys who are out here enjoying the sun on this nice day. I kind of see them up here lounging. They love to hang out here when it's sunny out. So we have a two females and a male. We have Gelfling, who is the mother. She's older, she's 25, so she's getting up there for a howler monkey. And then we have Bert and AJ, who are brother and sister. Bert is 11 and AJ is 10, so they are around this roughly the same age. Howler monkeys are a species of what are sometimes called New World primates. So that basically means that they are a species of primate that is native Central or South America. So there's several species of howler found in that region of the world. And these guys are luckily actually not they're endangered in the wild. They're doing pretty well because they're fairly resilient to damaged habitat. So the animal species that tend to suffer the most from human habitat development are species that really rely on primary habitat. And these guys, yes, they need forests to thrive, but they actually can do a little bit better in what's sometimes referred to as edge habitat. So habitat that humans disrupted a bit. So these guys are mostly folivores, which I believe Zookeeper Kim introduced the term in another one of our videos. So they would eat mostly leaves in the wild. So here they get a lot of grains to keep them healthy. Their diets are specially maintained. These guys can be kind of picky eaters. They definitely do not like everything that is put in front of them, but they have gotten better being super selective. So Zookeeper Kim talked to you guys a bit about telling the difference between a monkey and an ape. And the most obvious difference is that apes do not have tails monkeys do. Clearly see the tails on these guys. I want to talk a bit about how you would tell a new world primate like these howler monkeys from what's called an old world primate. And an old world primate would be found in Asia or Africa. So these guys, like all monkeys, have a tail. However, only new world monkeys have a prehensile tail. So a prehensile tail means a tail that can kind of wrap around and hold on to things. So they can kind of use their tail as a fifth limb when they're climbing around here at the zoo or in the forest in their natural habitat. So that is one thing that is unique to what are called New World monkeys. Not all New World monkeys have a prehensile tail. However, any monkey that does have a prehensile tail is a New World monkey. And another interesting feature of these guys um, is that they are closely related to spider monkeys. We don't have any spider monkeys here at the zoo, but I think this brings another interesting difference between monkeys and apes. So spider monkeys and a couple other closely related monkey species, not including howler monkeys, basically have a, sh um, a rolling shoulder joint, similar to what you or I would have. We can roll our shoulder, put our arm all the ways up like this. So most monkeys actually cannot do that. Neither can howlers. They're, however, howlers' close relatives, the spider monkeys, can do that. 
That is an actually an important difference between the vast majority of monkeys and apes. You'll notice with our, if you visit the zoo when we're open again, our siamang, they can brachiate, they can lift their arms like that, sort of just like we can. So ironically, the toy on the playground, monkey bars, most monkeys actually wouldn't be able to use that the way we do. Their shoulders actually do not work like that. You can see these guys, they kind of walk on all fours and run on all fours up in the trees. They're extremely agile. However, they cannot brachiate the way our cyanangs, for example, can. And these guys get their names, howler monkeys. As you can guess, they make a noise, but it doesn't really sound like a howl. I'd say it sounds a bit more like a bellow. It gets very, very loud. And they kind of do that to claim their space. It's a territorial thing in the wild. Howler monkeys live in smallish groups with multiple females, sometimes multiple males as well. There are usually more females than males in howler monkey groups, although it just varies by individual group, quality of the habitat, as well as the howler monkey species. But they are a species that lives in mixed male, mixed female groups. And they do that bellowing to kind of claim their group's space because they, as you can probably see from these guys, they're not the most active monkey species in the wild. They really like to sit and digest all those leaves just for as much of the day as they can. So bellowing to claim their territory is a kind of energy efficient way to claim that space where they don't have to run around and patrol the borders the way some more active primate species do. So that'll lead to our um, challenge for today. So these guys, kind of similar to our Siamang, make a loud noise, kind of claim their space to communicate with other primate groups in the area. I'm going to challenge you to try to, while maintaining safe social distancing, like these howler monkeys do, keep in contact with your friends. However that might work for you. Shoot them a text message, call them, video chat them, in some way stay in contact because research on primates has, sh has shown similar results to research on humans. Primates in a very stressful time do better and stay healthier when they have contact with their friends. So this is something that research has shown us in various primate species, including humans. So do try and stay in contact with people you care about, even if you can't be close to them. So that is the Howler Monkeys challenge to you today.